Uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 171 of the Spears Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and no slide season starts in two weeks. I'm coming to Sunshine Coast, Gympie, and the Gold Coast. Those are the first three cities. You guys are up first, uh, and tickets are going going really well. So uh, I'm super pumped. Make sure you get yours at lewspears.com slash gigs. Melbourne has like 10 left, the first one. So Brisbane's going crazy. All of them are going crazy. Gimpy, actually, a couple people buying tickets. So that's going to be a great show as well. Finally, it's uh, all looking like it's going to be my biggest tour yet, and it's definitely going to be the best show yet. Um, now, uh, I... Like, I hope all of you, right, I hope all rational citizens listening to this podcast are absolutely fucking obsessed with Jeffrey Epstein's murder. Bro, you reckon he killed himself? Didn't I say, didn't I fucking talk about it in the last podcast? I said he was going to kill himself or they were going to kill him like everybody else did. That shit is so fucking crazy. I just I, I just finished filming a bi-monthly bull episode about it. I started writing. Bi-monthly bull, you guys know the series. It's supposed to be like six or seven different stories. Oh, there's Keelan. Hey. Look at him. Hey, they can't hear you, dumb cunt. <laughs> um, bi-monthly bull is supposed to be like six or seven different fucking stories. I started writing about Epstein and then just kept going. And there's a, it's the first bi-monthly bull I've ever done on one thing. So I, I, it's a really good video, though. I, me and Keelan were just talking about it. I think that video is either going to bang and it's going to get heaps of views because it's funny or no one's going to see it because it's just going to get suppressed. I was telling, as I was writing the script, I was just uh, remembering like articles that I'd read, referencing headlines that I'd seen, this and that. And uh, I tell Keelan, I write it in the script. I go, I'll just find these articles that say these things that I'm referencing so it's well sourced. And then he tells me while he was editing it, he had to find everything that I was talking about on fucking DuckDuckGo because you couldn't find it on Google. What, what, what am I, fucking Alex Jones, where the only shit that I'm talking about you can't even find? Is that going to happen to me? Is the only way you're going to be able to listen to Spearhead Sundays by going on fucking DuckDuckGo and checking it out? Hey, Spearhead Sundays available exclusively on Bing. <laughs> Bro, crazy, huh? And uh, the stuff that I was referencing was all true. I wasn't saying crazy shit. I was referencing shit that I'd heard about that he'd said or that had definitely happened. But you can only find it on DuckDuckGo because Google just wants to feed you the narrative, which is, oh, uh, a 74-year-old never previously suicidal man killed himself after saying, hey, guys, I reckon someone's trying to kill me. That's the one that you really couldn't find, him uh, telling prison guards that he thought someone was trying to kill him after his first attempt. Fucking insane, bro. And what's, what I find the craziest thing about his death is that when he got locked up, right, everyone, every single person on Twitter, on Facebook, everywhere in the world was going, oh, I bet they'll, found him, they'll find him dead. I bet he'll kill himself. Like saying, oh, I bet they're going to kill him for what he knows. And then they fucking did it anyway. Like they were just like, yes, we will. Good idea. Chop that cunt. Fucking insane. That means, right, that whatever he knew, yeah, about fucking the Clintons, Prince Andrew, Trump, everyone, all the other billionaires he was friends with, whatever he knew, right, everybody in the world knowing that he was murdered, right, everybody knowing that was better than everybody knowing what he knew. That's the decision they made. Kill that guy. Oh, but then everybody's going to know that we've murdered him. Uh, is it better than everybody knowing how many kids I've fucked? No? Okay, get rid of him. Fucking insane. And imagine what he knew. And I wonder what's going to happen to his case. It'll just disappear into the wind. I have, I've, I've been reading... I don't understand too much about fucking anything. <laughs> <laughs> but I've been reading about like what happens to his case now and from what I've read, I don't know if this is true, but the because he's dead, the case will get dismissed. So like his victims can only find justice civilly, not like legally. So his victims can sue his estate and get money 
that's fine. That's a civil thing, like person to person. The government and laws aren't exactly involved in that other than, you know, determining who wins and all that shit. But, like, if you win a civil case, the government doesn't arrest the loser. He just gives you money, right? It's not a police government thing. So all these victims can get money, but anyone that's implicated in the Epstein shit, it doesn't matter because the case is closed so they can't get in trouble. So they fucking win for killing the cunt. It's insane. And the more I, I was writing all these jokes about it, trying to make it funny, the more I just started going to this giant rabbit hole. I think this might be the very first conspiracy theory that everyone in the world just goes, oh yeah, that's what happened. They killed him. Like the whole world. I'm surprised there's not like protests in the street about it. Like, hey, hey, we know he was a bad person, but killing him means that a hundred other fucking billionaire pedophiles get away with, with, with fucking kids on prison island. What's happening to them, guys? 100%. If that happened in Australia and there was a protest, I'd turn up. I like that that was a thing. Like, you know, the climate, fuck the climate. Who cares, right? Oh, oh my, my great great grandkids are going to be born with skin cancer. Who cares, right? Fuck those kids. I want to get the guy who fucked those kids. <laughs> but yeah, man, insane. I've been reading all about it, all the excuses. You can't find, you can't find the stuff that, that, that was out there that you now can't find. You cannot find the first 4chan post that came out at the same time as the other 4chan post that people are talking about. So the first... The one that people talk about now is someone posting on 4chan before the news knew about Epstein's death, listing a whole bunch of medical reasons that lined up with what the hospital had. So it would have been like a paramedic or someone working at the hospital. They posted on 4chan, right? But that's what everyone's talking about. So that one's fucking legit. But then the other one, the, the one that I saw first, which is a scary one, which was posted also before the news found out, was talking about how a van rolled up to the prison and a guy wearing army fatigues came in and killed Epstein and then took his body out and it didn't look like Epstein. That's the crazy one. But that also came out before anybody knew. So either that was like an incredibly lucky fluke from a 4chan troll just typing shit to make the internet go nuts, which, let's be honest, that's an actual plausible one. Or... It's fucking true. Jeffrey Epstein's, you know, on some other pedophile island living it, living it up while his body double rots. <laughs> I don't believe that. I think, they actu I think they did actually kill Epstein. I don't think they've swapped him out. Which is, like, crazy to say and not feel crazy. You know what I mean? Like, whenever I've said other conspiracy theories, that talking about them, even just discussing them, makes me feel nuts and insane like even 9-11 I, I don't think that was an inside job but talking about it and, and the reasons why they think it was an inside job makes me feel a bit crazy but talking about this Jeffrey Epstein stuff with anybody like this is the first thing that I've talked about with 100% of the people where everyone's gone oh yeah they killed him like uh, it's not a, it's just like a fact like everybody just fucking knows they did it and no one really cares it's weird it's like oh yeah they killed him my girlfriend was like, good. He was a pedophile. I'm like, yeah, but it's not, it's, it's, it's not good because all of the people that he were helping him are going to get fucking free now. And what's even crazier is if you really look even deeper into it, nobody actually knows how Jeffrey became a billionaire. Like, he was like a, a guy that handled investments for billionaires, but... He never really had any financial experience before that. So all these billionaires were like, oh, you want to just have all of my money and do with it as you please? Here you go. Have, uh, oh, so you've never, you've never worked or invested $100 before? Oh, well, no worries. It's not, you don't really need experience. Just have, have fun, mate. So now going further into it, people think that he, he, the only reason he was managing these people's money was because he was just blackmailing the fuck out of them. Because they found cameras on the, his fucking pedophile island everywhere and they got all his hard drives. So for all we know, the reason he is a billionaire investment banker or whatever the fuck he did, no one really knows, is because he just invited all these billionaires to an island, filmed them fucking kids and was like, hey man, give me 10% or else. I leak everything. And then obviously everyone was like, well, 
Ten percent? How about twenty? <laughs> How about, you're at thirty. Have all of it. Who cares? Do whatever you want. As long as I can keep coming to the back to your island. I don't know, man. It's um fucking wild. And what's even crazier? What's not crazy? It's just nothing will happen now. It's already it's already being forgotten. Already moving on. Google doesn't let you look it up anymore, obviously. The only people who care about Jeffrey Epstein are the type of insane cunts who use DuckDuckGo and no one trusts them, you know? You might trust me, maybe. But 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 if you if I open up my phone and you saw the DuckDuckGo app instead of the Google app, you'd be like, oh he's insane. Put him in put him in a room. Get rid of that guy. <laughs> um yeah, man, it's just crazy. Like, like people saying that they heard shrieking on the, the morning of his death, coming from his cell. He was on suicide watch, and then they took him off suicide watch, which goes against protocol. Like, he tried to kill himself, which is probably a murder attempt. He tried to kill himself, and then he went in suicide watch, and then they took him off it for no reason. And then when you get off suicide watch, you're supposed to be put in with a cellmate who will obviously go, hey, this guy's trying to kill himself. Stop it. And then they took the cellmate, cellmate out of his cell, right, hours before he was killed, the day of, as soon as the cellmate left the cell, they were like, get out, mate, we've got business with this guy, got rid of him. And then despite all of the yelling heard from the cell the morning of the murder, both of the jail guards who were supposed to be monitoring him fell asleep at the same time. Both of them fell asleep at the same time. They both, you know, let's have a little bit of a cuddle and a snooze. You reckon that's what happened? Nah. And the camera didn't work. Oh, you're telling me that a that a camera in a maximum security prison that holds murderers stopped working? Okay, sure. I'll believe one camera. Maybe. Maybe the... I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. Camera stopped working. Okay. Show me the entrance. Show me the exit. Show me all of the other cameras in that facility. Because we know you don't just have one. Show me the, the hallway outside his cell. Everything. Show me, the, show me footage of the guards sleeping. That's what I want to see. But they won't. Oh, we got hit by a fucking EMP. That's what happened. <laughs> Luckily, our lethal injection machine still worked. Fucking crazy. Yeah, bro, I don't know what to tell you. The 74-year-old man, previously never suicidal in his life, tried to kill himself after telling everyone that people were trying to kill him. That's uh, 100% what happened. Even the fucking president says that it's sus, and so does everyone who disagrees with the president. It's the only thing that's actually going to unite America is, oh, yeah, someone killed the pedos. That's why I think that, like, it's so... People going, oh, Hillary Clinton did it, the Clintons did it, or Donald Trump did it. It's just like everyone... It's just jumping to blame their enemy. Like, if you're right-wing, you blame the Clintons. If you're left-wing, you blame Donald Trump. Bro, neither of them had anything to do with it. Bill Clinton was probably having a big sweat, for sure. He was definitely, definitely been to that island a bit too many times. But he didn't kill him. It was fucking whoever fuck who, whoever's above those cunts. It goes so much further than that. Like, Prince Andrew... The president doesn't actually run America. Okay, now I'm saying crazy shit. Okay, now, all right, now I'm just going to say this is this is the part. Everything before, that was legit. Now I'm getting into crazy land, all right, where, bro, the government, the presidents, they don't run the world. It's the fucking billionaires and the secret Illuminati guys that you'd never even heard of. That's who, that's the crazy shit, okay? And I'll admit, that's the, the we've hit the line, all right? We filled up the cup. We filled the conspiracy cup to the top, and now it's starting to spill out in the crazy plate. And now we're into the world, world wide web of fucking insane cunts. And the chemicals are turning the frogs gay. That's where we are right now. We're in Infowars.com. Insane zone. All right. All this stuff about Jeffrey Epstein being murdered. Totally sane opinions. And now we get to the government doesn't run the, the government. It's the Illuminati. Little bit crazy zone. Okay. I'm, I'm prepared. But I'm prepared to admit when I hit the crazy zone and we fucking hit that shit at 100 miles an hour. So I'm actually using this uh, new camera. Uh, I'm testing out using the good camera that we have to record the podcast. I'm going to go back to the old one next episode, but I'm just testing to see how it sounds, see how it looks. Let me know how it looks. We just have it on full auto 
because the the focus it focuses itself and we're testing that shit out so because the podcast if it doesn't look that good i mean hey you guys are used to that you know so we, we we can we can afford to test shit out on you um oh keelan can can we upload that bi-monthly now not yet. Not yet. Let me know, and I'm, okay. Let me know, and we'll take a pause, and hopefully, I'll get it up before Men in Black Mask put a bullet in my head. They go, "Oh, he killed himself." <laughs> like they give a fuck about me. Um, but yeah, we're testing out this camera. I'm gonna go back to the old one, but let me know what you think if it if we should continue using it. I'm actually trying to get a a, a new backdrop done up i've uh i've shown it to the patrons and uh they've been giving me feedback on it we're making something very special for speared sundays going to do a big set upgrade uh at some point in the next couple of months but uh the patrons have been helping me out with it and we've come up with something really really fucking cool this whole ugly warehouse rape dungeon jeffrey epstein island backdrop that's going to go we're going to get a big tarp printed up with a fucking awesome design and uh it's uh uh, hey, join Patreon if you want to see it right now. It's fucking really good. But otherwise, hey, you got to wait fucking ages. Um, so that's really cool. Um, what else has been going on? Oh, I'm going to Tassie, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm going to Tassie. Uh, actually, by the time you listen to this, unless you're a Patreon supporter, uh, I will be in Tasmania because I'm going to visit my friend Greeley in Risden Prison. Uh, and if you want to send a letter to Greeley, I think um, check a couple of later episodes or even the podcast group. I've put his address to send a letter to him while he's in prison, um, which is almost as bad as being in Tasmania. <laughs> Poor cunt. But I finally locked down a visit with him, uh, booked it in. Because I, I didn't know this, guys, but when, when you have a friend in prison, you get treated like a criminal too. When you talk to them on the phone, you've got to be fucking approved. You've got to be checked by the government. You've got to not have your own criminal record. You have to never have been in that prison before. You have to... They, they, they fucking search you. There's a list of things you can and can't say. You can't take things in with you. Uh, for some reason, you can't take weapons. I'm not sure oh, because they don't like weapons. There's a whole bunch of shit. They treat you like a criminal. It's like, bro, I didn't do anything. I just want to talk to my friend because I hate sending letters. And he doesn't have... Yeah, I can't FaceTime him, can I? But... um. I, I was I was calling it. I'm so I'm so fucking out of my depth. Like all my other all my other dangerous friends, all my other mates, my criminal mates, they know that they know what's going on. They're like, as soon as Greeley went in, they were they were all caught up. They were like free grills, FTS, fuck the system, and then they just organized. They made sure that they were approved visitors. They put themselves on the approved call list. I'm an approved visitor, but he can't call me. I don't know why. What's wrong with my phone number, right? Uh, they sent him letters. They organized this and that. They got in the courts. They, they knew the whole deal, right? Because this is something... I've got tough friends, but I'm not, like, in it, you know? People that are in the vortex of tough and criminal and fuck cops and drugs, all that shit. I love that. I love dipping my toe in, you know? Dip my toe in, hang out with people with face tattoos for one night, take it out, live my life for three months. In and out. That's how you do it. Because if you go too far in, next thing you know, you've got face tats, you're missing teeth, and you've punched a police officer. You don't want to go too far in. But if you just dip your toe in, a lot of good fun, a lot of good stories to bring back to your podcast, and uh, you get to meet people from all walks of life, right? Gives you a... Don't... Yeah, anyway. What I'm saying is, FDS, fuck the system. But, but, but then, you know, for three months, I'll be like, cops and laws, good idea. I like that. Make society run, okay? Except for the ones that get pedophiles killed in prison. Um, what am I saying? Oh, yeah. They knew everything. I'm so out of my fucking depth, like having a friend in prison. I don't know... I don't know what to do. So I call the prison and I'm trying to... I've been trying to book this for three weeks because he's only allowed... He's only allowed two visitors a week and they get, they get booked up. He's popular, right? He's a very popular man. He gets lots of visits. And I'm, I'm trying to book a visit. I have to call like fucking six times. For some reason, when you Google it on Google to see their opening hours, the prison, it always says closed. And that amuses me because, of course, it's closed. It's a prison. If it was open, wouldn't work very well, would it? But anyway, they're open from fucking 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., the customer service where people can call and ask about prison. Is he, can you let him out? No. Oh, you fucking dogs. And you hang up and you call tomorrow. Is he, can you let him out today? No. Oh, you fucking dogs. Just do that. I guess they must get a lot of that. Oi, fucking... Oi, free Tony. Free Tony. He killed two cops and punched his missus, but fuck the system. Hang up. I bet they get I bet they get so many prank calls like that. Fuck the system, bro. You dogs. 
cops are criminals. <laughs> Punch cops, live free. But they get heaps of that. But I'm calling. I, I reckon I, I can tell by talking to the lady. I'm the most polite cunt they've ever spoken to. I'm like, hello, uh, I would like to book a visit with prisoner Andrew Greeley. I don't know why every time I call them, I go, prisoner Andrew Greeley. Of course he's a prisoner. Otherwise, why the fuck would I be calling him? Hi, I'd like to book a visit with Andrew Greeley. Um, oh, sorry, Andrew Greeley is not a prisoner. Oh, sorry, I have the wrong number. Is, is that what I think is going to happen? I keep saying, Pris- hello, I would like to book a call with prisoner Andrew Greeley. And she goes, yep. No worries, we can do that for you. Um, and I, I go, oh, can I do Friday? And they go, ooh, sorry. He's actually booked up for his two visits for the week. And I'm like, all right, that's all right. No worries, I'll just uh, book one for next week. And they go, ooh, sorry. You can't book more than six days in advance. And I said, why? And she said, because this is a prison. And then I went, oh, I'll call back on Monday then. <laughs> and then I call back on Monday. I'm like, hi, I would like to book a visit with prisoner Andrew Greeley. And she goes, yep, no worries. Uh, lock it in for Saturday. I'm like, yep, let's do it on Saturday. Great. Now, uh, it is going to be a box visit. Is that okay? And I went, fuck, I got no idea what a box visit is. Uh, what's a box visit? Is that good or is that bad? Box visit, box visit. Yes, that's fine. And then I hung up and then I Googled it and I couldn't find what a box visit was. So I just thought about it for five days. I was like, what's a box visit? Do we sit on a box? Are we in a box? Do we meet in a boxing ring? Do we fight? Do we meet in some woman's pussy? What's a box visit? Do we meet and I give him a box full of treats? What is a box visit? I don't get it. Anyway, then I did the comics lounge and I talked to Chris Waynehouse and I was like, finally, someone who's been to jail. I can talk to this person. Great. What's a box visit? And he goes, well, a box visit is when uh, uh, they, you, you, he's in the box and you talk to each other and there's glass separating you and you talk to each other on the phone. And I went, oh, fuck, that sucks because I want to... I want to, you know, give him a hug, shake his hand, say hello, see him, have a conversation at a table like you see on Law and Order SVU. And he goes, no, 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 a box visit is actually not as good for you, but much better for him. And I went, why? And he goes, because for a box visit, because you can't touch and you obviously can't pass him anything, he doesn't have to get his asshole searched on the way out. And I went, oh, great. I, I guess it's a good thing that we got a box visit. Because I guess if you don't have a box visit, at the end of that normal visit where you can touch, he gets a fucking rim visit from the prison guards and they have a look. And that's not good, is it? So I'm excited for my box visit with my with prisoner Andrew Greeley. Should be fun. Well, it won't be fun. I'm actually I'm, I'm bummed that he's in there, but I don't know. Be good to see him anyway. It's funny. I got so many rapper friends. I was texting Manners, and I was—I said, "Oh, I'm gonna—I'm gonna visit Greeley." And rapper friends are just like rapper friends and comedian friends are kind of similar in like you can't separate what they do from their identity. You know, like if I'm talking to my comedian friends, I will always hear jokes. I will always, and they'll always be like shitty ones because if it's actually a good joke, you don't text it to a friend, you write it down. So when I'm talking to my fucking rapper friends, you can't separate the rapper from the person. So I just get like puns, wordplay and shitty bars in my text because if they were good bars they would write them down to go into a song right so i'm texting manners and i go oh i'm gonna go visit prisoner andrew Greeley in risden prizzy and he goes he goes you're a stand-up man no pun intended it's like bro you 100 percent intended the fuck out of that and i respect it stand by that you're a stand-up man and he thought because you can't separate the rapper from the person right because you know man has thought that bro you're a stand-up man and he thought that's kind of kind of corny i won't write it down in my bars book but i will text it to lewis he can get my shitty bar that's not even good enough for a tweet right because i respect that 
You know, I send my shitty jokes to my rapper friends. I was texting Cursor. And then two hours later, he texts me accidentally. He goes, fuck it, bro. If it's ready, drop it now. That didn't mean to text that to me. He was talking about his film clip that came out. But he goes, fuck it, bro. If it's ready, drop it now. And then I sent him a picture of spaghetti on the floor. And I went, fuck. I thought you were talking about my dinner. It was ready, so I dropped it on the floor. And that is the worst joke I've ever thought of in my life. And he texts me back, ha, ha, ha. And I know he didn't laugh. I know he didn't laugh at all, right? Because that sucks. But you can't separate the comedian from the person. So all of my friends get my shit jokes that don't even make it to Twitter. And also, so do you, cunt. So enjoy. Pastor on the floor comedy. Fucking hell. Um, speaking of pasta, I went to a, uh, how long have we gone for? I can't tell on this fucking camera. It doesn't say. Oh, that's good. I should have set a timer. I have no idea. How long do you reckon I've been going for? 27 minutes. 27 minutes? Roughly? Okay, good, good. I got, I got time for one more story, then we'll do a miss bit. I went to, speaking of pasta, I went to fucking, um, I went to, uh, some Italian restaurant with my girl after a gig and um, went to like, uh, it was like, I don't know, fancy part of Melbourne. Not fancy. It was just where all those restaurants are. Not not Ligon Street, the one that's like further north Melbourne. I don't know what it's called, but it's got all these fucking restaurants. And we tried to go to one and it was packed full. And uh, they were like, oh, we're only doing takeaway at the moment. And we went, oh, suck my dick from the back. And then we left. Uh, and then we were trying to work out where we we're going to go because we're not going to fucking get takeaway from a restaurant fuck off it's, what is this KFC it was fucking Friday night let me have a table cunt why are you closing they had tables like, we're only doing takeaways this because I've got boys in prison you discriminating against me because I've got tough friends bro just because I've got boys in lock up fucking yeah I'm I'm not tough but my mates are so watch out so we're like, well, we decided to go to the place next door, but it was empty as fuck. So we're like, oh, does this mean it's bad? Which is never the case. It just looks like it's the case. So nobody goes in and it's empty because it's empty, not because of the quality of the food. We go in and this woman, she was like an Italian woman. And she was like every, every Italian wog mum you've ever met in your life, right? Just so many words and so many questions and just wants to talk to you and like be a mum. Like every Italian mum I've ever met is like also kind of like, like if, if you go over to your Italian friend's house and they have like a stereotypical Greek Italian, Greek or Italian mum, right? It's like they're mainly your friend's mum, but also while you're there, they're kind of your mum too. You know, they just act like that. Like they act like that, you know, like they're a little bit your mum and you, you love your mum, your real mum. But also, you can't just for just for the day, just for the three hours that you're at your friend's house after school. You love your Italian mum a little bit more because she's just great. She's the best because you get all of the love of the Greek Italian mum with none of the getting hit in the fry pan for failing school. Right? All that's great. So we had that, and she was she was our mum for a minute, but she kept. I had some of the best pasta I've ever had in my fucking life and some of the worst conversation I've ever had in my life because if you guys know anything about me, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to talk to anyone. I love talking to fans. Great. Always come say hi. Love having a chat with you guys because we have a bit of a rapport. I give you funny shit. You give me cash. I give you a ticket. I give you more funny shit, right? Great. Symbiotic relationship. If you're... Uh, anyone else, I don't ever want to have a conversation with you. Oh, oh, you're my Uber driver and we're going to drive for 20 minutes? Hey, let's do it in silence. Oh, you're at a cafe and you're taking my order? Great. 30 seconds of chat. And what are we talking about? What I'm having for breakfast. Your day? Oh, no, we're not. Because we're not going to do that. Because I just want pancakes and silence. What, what would you like today, sir? Uh, yeah, can I get um, the eggs Benedict? 
Yep. But instead of ham, can I get that with salmon? Yeah, that'll be an extra $3. $3? Yep, no worries. I can do that. Uh, no Sled Season is on sale now, so I can afford salmon eggs, Benedict. Uh, also, could I get a cappuccino in a mug, please? Uh, yep. And would you like anything else? Yes, I would, actually. I would like silence. Oh, so you don't... No, I don't want to talk to you at all. That's all. Uh, yep. So that'd be salmon eggs, Benedict, cappuccino in a mug, and for me to fuck up? Yes, that would be good. All right. Well, enjoy your... Ah, too much! That's all. And then they come up halfway through the meal and they go, How is it good? Hey, man. I'll let you know. Go away. They always do that. Right? Like when you're eating the, the most fuck off massive burger and you just... And they wait, right? They see you about to take a bite and they go, No, I'll wait. I'm not going to ask him now. I'll just wait. And then you put it in your, too much of it in your mouth because you're a fucking animal and you, oh, and then your, your mouth is full of burger and then they go, oh, looks like he can't speak. Time to talk to him. Are you enjoying your meal, sir? And you look at, the, at them with shame and you go, <laughs> and then they walk away. Hey, don't do that ever. Go away. I'll let you know. I'll put my finger up and I'll go, hey, compliments to the chef or this is fucked. That's all. You, I, what do you want? Oh, yeah. It's great, man. The lettuce is good and the bun's good. How's your day go? Fuck off. I'm trying to eat. Leave me alone. Anyway, this, uh, this, my mum for the evening, the Italian woman, me and Jazz get in, and me and Jazz, we hadn't seen each other all week. We just want to talk to each other, all right? Jazz is like me. She's like, don't talk to me ever, right? She, we're, we're talking, and then the woman comes up. She goes, oh, hi, how are you going? We're the only people in the restaurant. She, oh, I will, I will actually thinking about closing, but then you guys came in, so I guess we'll, we'll stay open. And I said, I guess that's how a restaurant works, isn't it? Anyway, we sit down and she goes, oh, we were thinking about closing, you know. I'm like, yeah, you told me. We're thinking about closing, but then you guys came in and you're such a lovely couple. What would you like to eat? And I went, oh, I want, um, can I get the, I'd already decided. Can I, I wanted the bolognese. Can I get that? She goes, you know, you should really try the bolognese. You should try it with the gnocchi. And I had already picked that off the menu. You try it with the gnocchi because it's got, it's really good potato. It's homemade. I'm like, really? Is this a home or is this a restaurant? Oh, it's a home. It's a restaurant. Oh, it's a restaurant, man. It's homemade. Uh, and and you should also try the steak. The steak is really good. And if you want a bit of wine, here's the wine selection. And before I could say I don't drink, she started. Here's the wine. This the fucking fickle mistress is good. And red wine and this and that. All this talking her fucking ears off. And um, Jazz is listening because she's a nice person. <laughs> I don't know why. And then uh, and then she the woman walks away and I without taking our order. I'm like I'd already fucking decided. We'd sat there for three minutes, five minutes without her and then she came and talked to us for 10 minutes about the menu and then didn't take the order and we were like oh i'm exhausted i want to leave and my jazz is like so what have you been doing i'm like i don't want to talk to you i've had my conversation for the day with that woman it's done now i can't talk to you i'm overloaded with shit and then she comes back and she takes her orders and i'm like yeah can i get the bolognese with the gnocchi and she goes oh i convinced you of the gnocchi and i went i oh, know you didn't because i already fucking decided and then you started talking before i could order then she got all excited. She's like, oh, I've, I've bloody, I'm the bloody food recommending expert. I've, I've just told them everything they need to know about the Noki, and that's why they got it. And it's like, no, mate, you just, I already, whatever. Then she goes away, and then she comes back, she gives us cutlery, and Jazz stupidly goes, oh, these are nice, nice knives. And I went, you idiot, why did you do that for? And she went, oh, yes, they are good knives. Guess where I got them? And this, she did this three times. Guess where I got them? And Jazz went, I don't know. She would guess. Um, no, she would guess. You have to guess. She was one of those people that when they say guess where I got them from, they actually want you to guess. Sometimes I'll say guess where I got it and you leave a little pause for, for dramatic effect. Guess where I got these shoes. Catch of the day. But it, imagine if I was like, Guess where I got these shoes? (laughs) 
You're not guessing. Guess. Out of all of the 300 places you can buy shoes, guess where I got them? Nike? Nah. Guess again. Adidas? Nah. Imagine if I was that cunt. You would hate me. And she was that cunt. And she goes, guess where I got these knives? And Jazz's like, I don't know. Guess. I don't know. You have to guess. Ikea. No. And she like went like that. She put her hand out like, I have another go. You can get it. At least give me a clue if we're playing Cluedo. She goes, I got it from a trader's market. And Jazz went, that makes sense. <laughs> anyway, then we get our, get our food. And I would, I would be raging if it wasn't the best fucking bolognese I've ever had in my fucking life. And then Jazz is such an asshole. She sees me hating the conversation we're having with the woman. So, of course, to piss me off, she starts talking to the woman. She goes, oh, where'd you get those tablecloths? I'm like, what are you doing? And the woman goes, guess... No, I asked you where you got it from. Not guess. She goes, got it from Thailand. After three wrong guesses. Ikea? No. Traders Market? No. Tablecloth shop? Nah. Thailand? Great. And then she starts telling us all about her Thai trips to Thailand. She goes, I love going to the beach and I love this and that. And me and Jazz haven't talked to each other yet. Like, we haven't seen each other for an entire week. We have dinner. We're having dinner for a, for an hour. We still haven't talked to each other because we're talking to this chick. We're the only people in the restaurant. And then she goes, oh, I tell my stories, don't I? I tell my stories. Yeah, you do. And hey, they sucked. That's all right, though. Because you run a restaurant. Not a storytelling, s- 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 annoying shush. <laughs> just be silent. Thankfully, other people came in and me and Jazz just watched the woman do the same thing to everyone. How, I don't understand how, some people are just like that. Hey, they just talk to everyone. It's funny how, like, there's those people and then there's me. The Prince of Darkness don't talk to me. Leave me alone. I'm in my own head. I'm talking to myself. Not that I don't like talking. It's just that I, I'm already having a better conversation with someone that I like much more. Me. By myself. In my own head. Walking down the street like an insane person. The only thing that separates me from that guy you, in the city that you see who's on all the drugs talking to himself is that my mouth isn't moving. It's going on in my head. See, we're the same right? Minus the drugs, we're exactly the same. We're talking to ourselves about high concepts that don't make sense to anybody else or fictionalized realities that don't exist yet. We're doing the same shit. It's just I'm doing it in here and he's doing it out there for everyone to hear. We're the same cunt. And that's why those guys never talk to you because they're having a great conversation with themselves. And you see, and you look at them and you go, I don't think I've ever had a conversation that good. You know why? Because you've only ever talked to someone else. If you do 100% of the work, you always get the best conversation. (laughs) All right. Let's get in the miscellaneous bit at the end, shall we? Um, How's the the video going? Still? Really? That's fucking weird. It's been going for ages. Oh, uh, bi monthly bull always takes ages. Yeah. Uh, or the Illuminati's trying to... They, see, they saw, saw all the pictures of Epstein and fucking Jeffrey headlines that we screen cap from DuckDuckGo and they were like, shut it down. All right, miscellaneous bit at the end. Oh, my fucking... I got to get my phone. Where's my phone, cunt? I need the internet. Oh, I'm not going to pause it. Suck me. <laughs> all right, I'm getting my phone. Here we go. And I'm back. All right, how were you? Did you enjoy that? Hey, bit of the the silence. Just going to turn my hotspot on because I don't have internet because I run my business out of a hole. 
And someone was murdered around the corner and found in a fucking bin. That's real. That's a real thing that happened in reality. I saw the police pull the body out of the bin. Um, all right. I'm st- I'm, I remember that scene forever, the rest of my life. But at least I saved $100 on rent. Um, podcast at loosebeers.com if you'd like to send an email uh, to be featured on the podcast if you have a question, if you have a story, if you need some life advice. Oh, I really want to try stand-up comedy. Oh, I really want to fuck girls. Yeah, good on you. Fucking send it through. I'll ignore it. Um, uh, and literally, I don't know if I want to be a comedian or a chef. Um, that's an email that I have. Uh, Okay, I'll I'll read that one just because I fucking... G'day, Lewis. My name's Sam. I'm a massive fan. I'm 16. But unlike all your other fans my age, this uh, what this I love that I said I predicted exactly what the email was going to be, and th- that's exactly what I got, and it started with, I'm different. Nah, you're the same. Unlike all, uh, other fans my age, this email isn't because I fucked someone I shouldn't have. Oh, okay. At least he's calling out the other side. It's like, oh, I'm, I want to be a comedian or I fucked someone I shouldn't have. I wanted, I've wanted, i wanted to be a chef for as long as I can remember. Um, my entire outlook on what I will do once I leave school has revolved around I will become a chef or I will die. Why? Are you allergic to not being a chef? Uh, there is nothing else. See, that's a joke I should have texted to one of my rapper friends. There's nothing else for me in this world other than cooking. But I've been doing stand-up comedy for a little over a year now. A year? You're 16 and you've been doing it since you were 15? That's crazy. And it's a lot more fun than cooking. I certainly see myself pursuing a career in stand-up, but I feel as though that is not a smart thing to do. The longer I do... stand up the less I want to be a chef but because of the outlook I've had for the past few years I haven't really taken time to get good at anything else at the moment my plan is to try and get a cert three and work as a chef and do stand up on the side but those two things kind of clash as they're both nighttime jobs that's true my mum says I should try and complete the certificate as quickly as possible before school finishes so I can take a gap year to do comedy. Your mum's a genius. I just feel that if I start doing t- a TAFE course in the middle of the year 11, I won't be able to keep up with work, training, school, and of course stand-up. I was interested in what your opinion is. Should I try for a cert? Should I give up on being a comedian? Should I drop out of school? Any and all advice is appreciate, much appreciated. I've been a fan of you since I was 12. I've corrupted the cunt. Death Threats Don't Scare Me was incredible. Independent Variable was amazing. And I'm excited to see No Slide Season in Brisbane. Keep up the hard work and have an incomprehensibly, unequivocally shit one. P.S. I bought the VIP package for No Slide Season, but since I'm under 18 and going by myself, will that be an issue? I have no idea. There's you. You got a fucking email. Look at look at that. Look at her email. Don't ask me. I'm not. Does it say on my? When you go on my fucking buy, I'm so sick of questions about age limits and tickets and entry and how many are there left and can I do this and can I can I fuck my mate in the front? When you go on my page and you on Instagram, when you read my bio and it says Lewis Spears below that, does it say customer service or does it say comedian? I, as you know what? I'm going to look right now just to check because so many people are asking me about VIP and doors open and length of shows and tickets and 18 plus. I guess it must say customer service because that's what everyone's treating me like I am. I, I'll have a look. I'll, oh, oh, it doesn't. Oh, it says comedian. Well, fuck me. I guess you shouldn't ask me. Maybe you should have a look at your fucking email where it says the people to contact if you have an issue. Because it sure as hell isn't me. You know what I do now? I do the jokes. And I do the posts. And that's all. So if you've got a question, go away. Email it. It's on the fucking. Anyway, I'm sorry, Sammy. I'm just overreacting. I'm not take. I'm. I'm I, I imagine that it's not an issue. Um, but again, I don't know. So think, work it out yourself. Um, on to something that I can help with. Uh, I think that you're in a 
awesome spot because you love your backup plan, right? Comedy doesn't work, I'll become a chef and I'll fucking love being a chef, right? Awesome. Here's what I would do, right? I would get the Cert 3 because you can finish that by the end, by the time you finish high school, right? You honestly, you can't do comedy or another thing properly until you finish high school, right? So I would just f- do the Cert 3 and then by the time you finish high school, bang, like your mum said, you got a whole year that you can take off and be a, be a failure and fuck around and be shit at comedy. You might even be amazing at comedy because that's two years away. You're 16. I started at 18. Bro, I would have, I I, honestly, I'm so shitty at myself that I, I'm not, well, I'm not shitty because I'm, I'm, I'm fucking amazing at stand up. I'm good and that's great. But how much better would I be if I had two more years? Imagine if I started at 15, like I knew I wanted to. You have done that, bro. That's crazy. I don't know how you even perform because you're not allowed to go into bars. That's awesome. I think that's sick. So yeah, dude, honestly, I would finish the the certificate three because you're right. You can't really work as a chef during the night and do stand up because those things clash, but you could do it if you worked part time or if you found, I mean, restaurants are open during the day. Yeah. Why don't you, you can find a daytime job surely. Um, but yeah, dude, I would finish the cert three because you're doing high school anyway, right? And obviously you don't want to go to uni and you don't need to go to uni because you either want to be a comedian or a chef. So either you finish your high school degree and chase comedy and you have nothing or fuck high school, finish your certificate three in cooking and then you finish that by the time you're 18 and you have another two years of stand-up, you're probably going to be pretty fucking good then you can take your gap year, start really working at the circuit, start doing videos or whatever. Bang. After a whole year, you'll have something. Honestly, I reckon it took me like, I, what, I started doing online shit at 18, 17, 18. Yeah, I started the online thing at 17. Late, well, it would have been really, really early 18, actually, 2012. I just turned 18 because I'm January. Yeah, 18, I started. And then I started stand-up at probably 19 and a half because I've been doing it for six years, stand-up. Because this is my fifth show. I started a year before my first show, doing it for six years. I started at 19. So, bro, you've got fucking four years on me. By the time you are my age... If you stick with it, you should be better than me. That's just how it works. A lot of these skills and shit is just time. I never try to be better than people that are older than me or or not older. I only try, I only want to be as good or better than people that have been doing it for exactly the same amount of time as me. So if they're 40 and they've been doing it for six years, I want to try and be a little bit better than them. But again, don't compare yourself to others. It's not healthy. Dude, just finish your fucking cert three while you're before and then get it done by the time you're 18. Your mum's totally right, I reckon. <clears throat> because you could definitely get a part time job when you're a chef. And then, yeah, just take the fucking gap year. And then, then you're 18. Then you can actually fucking fly around, perform in different cities if you want to, do clubs, all that kind of shit. I would do that. Do both. You have, you have no responsibilities. You have no rent. You got no kids. You got nothing. Your mum's obviously supportive. Make the fucking most of that. Do both while you can. Because the minute you hit 18 and you finish school, your mum's going to be like, you should get a fucking job. And you should. Mainly because it'll give you life experience to, to write about and money to travel to shows and shit. Do both, bro. I believe in you. That's fucking awesome that you started at 15. That's crazy. You're going to be so good. If you, if the only thing you have to do is keep doing it and you will be a freak. Um, okay. Where are we? Um, I reckon I'm going to end it there, guys. Because I yelled a lot about pasta. 
Um, all right, that's the end of the podcast. Thank you very much for listening. My name is Lewis Spears. Make sure you grab your tickets to No Slide Season. Tickets are going nuts. First Melbourne show has 10 left as of recording on fucking Thursday. So get them. Um, uh, because mainly I just want to sell that one out. It might even be sold out by the time you listen to this. Loosespears.com slash gigs. Uh, Sunshine Coast, Gimpy, and Gold Coast is coming up in two weeks. And then after that, Brisbane. So let's fucking go uh, grab your tickets. I will see you cunts there. My name's Lewis Spears. I'm filming every show, every single one of them, and I'm not releasing it online. So you got to come. All right, that's the end. See you later. Have a shit one. I'll let you know how I go with Greeley when I see him. Bro, don't fuck with me. I've got friends in prison, boys in lock-up. I'm tough cunt. How do I stop recording? Fucking, oh, I'm pushing the wrong button. Oh. Yeah, cunt.